Good morning. Good morning. And welcome, 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 welcome. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, sir. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We come into this place to honor God, develop Christians, connect people, and love, 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 love. Everybody, amen. Amen. As I look around today, I'm praying that God's Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God, would touch each and every one of you, that you feel his presence in this place. But you know you can feel his presence no matter where you go. He walks with you. He talks with you. When you're weak, he holds your hand. And we come into this place to worship, to celebrate him, our living king. Let's bow our heads for a moment and prepare ourselves to honor God through, through song and through worship, to give him all that we have. Heavenly Father, we lift you up today. God, you have seen us through some dark times. God, you have seen us through some happy times. Father, you've seen us through everything that we can ever experience in our lives. And for all of it, no matter how good or how bad, Father, we say thank you this morning. Father, touch us today as we worship you and we honor you. We come into this place to give you honor. We come into this place to thank you. Yes, sir. And for all of that, Lord God, we humble ourselves before you. Touch, Lord God. Let your spirit dwell in the hearts and minds of all of those that have gathered in this place today. And we give it all to you. All that we have belongs to you, O oh Lord. In the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Why don't you look at somebody and tell them it's good to see you today, will you? Come on, let's be nice. Let's be a church, huh? Oh, we're not going to have nothing but love in here today, huh? I'm so glad today that we're here. And we're going to get ready to do a little singing together. How many of y'all like to sing in the shower? Let me see. Uh, I know you'd be thinking you'd Luther Vandross huh, in the shower. Huh? Come on, let's stand all over the church. Let's sing together. Oh, give thanks. Come on, let's sing it.
we're going to open up the altar for prayer and maybe just maybe you want to come down here and stand alongside somebody we're going to believe god for a mighty move of his spirit i don't know how they do it in your church but in this area here we're going to believe that's holy ground won't you come if you're standing in need of prayer won't you come if you're going to stand instead of somebody that wish they could get up out of the hospital bed and be in the lord's house today it's prayer time. The fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. Those who are not coming, you may be seated. Maybe just maybe as you as you're sitting here, you might be thinking about how it was when you were a child, huh? Yeah. In another state, in another county. Mm -hmm. And the old folks would sing one of these old numbers. They'd say, they'd say, they'd say, Pass me not, oh gentle say. Y'all remember it, don't you? Sing it like they used to do it down in Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia. Wow. sanctuary create within us God a clean heart renew within us a right spirit we need you now God to bind our hearts together in a love that comes from you I thank you for Reverend who's called on you earlier asking you that you would help us to honor you God to develop as Christians to connect with one another and to love everybody and today God we need you to create within us a clean heart Forgive us our sins, God. We've erred and strayed from your way like lost sheep. But I know, God, that with a feeling and a move of your spirit, you can make us right with you. And God, with all that is going on right now, even in this room, I pray, God, that you would allow us to have a keen ability 
to hear from you, Ooh, yeah. to experience your presence and your power. Somebody God is fighting right now, bothered and burdened. Send a fresh wind, God. Let them know that with you all things are possible. Let them know, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Let them know, God, today that with you all things are possible. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, heavenly dove. Send a fresh wind. Even now, God. Send a fresh wind, God, even now. Let your rain in this place. Yeah. Let your rain in this place, God. to somebody look at them and tell them we're gonna be all right come on be nice to your neighbor please they won't bite you everybody's nice in here today amen thank you looks like we have a great number of visitors here today uh, i need you to know in the lord's house you're not a stranger good to see you donna i uh, i feel like it would be nice to uh, ensure that everybody feels welcome everybody feels welcome and earlier we had a conversation about that, about making sure that you knew you were in God's house. Amen. Amen. Some of you, different traditions. Uh, some, they might have a whole lot of other things going on in the service. But today, could it be that God's got a tailor-made blessing for you? Amen. Just because he loves you. I feel like going off script a little bit. I know we've got a lot planned today, but I want to make sure I'm in the right house, and I believe I am. So I believe somebody today is just thankful and wants to take a minute to just stand and give a little testimony about what the Lord has done for you. Is there anybody so led to do that today? If so, just stand and share into the glory of God. Had a breakthrough, had a blessing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's clap our hands for our sister. Thank you. Giving honor to God, to Pastor Levi, to members of the church. My name is Phyllis Marshall, and I'm truly 
blessed to be in the house of the Lord today, God. I have met Pastor tonight some years ago when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I live in Sacramento, and my good friend, Sonny Baker, had him give me a call and pray over me. And it's 2024. I'm here today. Hallelujah. Won't you say it, sister? So I'm a testament. I'm a testament. And I just, you know, having the opportunity to testify in church is a wonderful thing. That's what I grew up with with my mom the past for several years. One of the things I think I said recently is, why don't they have testimonies Look at God. in church anymore? You go to church and you're encouraged by the saints, okay, when they tell their story about how God is in their lives. Amen. So thank you for this opportunity. What are you doing? Look at that. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hands in the good of God. Yes, brother. Come on, use your outside voice, brother Clark. Most of us in here, and I found that you know you get strong, and then that thing will come on you. That's right. yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know you feel sad, but the Lord will see you through. Amen. Amen. Could it be that God sent Brother Clark here today to feel the love from the rest of the Christians here today? Yes. Could that be the case? Yes. Let's stretch our hands to James Clark's way, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for our brother who's strong in you. And missing his lovely wife. Pray God that you would strengthen him and bless him like times of good times, times well spent, might favor him. And then God, we know that somebody else is feeling something similar. And though our hands are stretched to Brother Clark, we know that you don't forget about us, you and others do. We trust you now for a huge blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you all for uh, sharing and listening. Uh, it's so nice to see members of the Divine Nine here, and we're going to come to y'all in a bit. But uh, I'm going to do, I feel feel like making an executive decision. I, I know we do things with plurality in the Lord's Church, but I saw my, my brother Spratt here. <laughs> this Adam A.J. Dax, he's a, he's a fellow that when my brother died, he got pain sang. But more than that, he showed me the love of Jesus. He sings in a lot of different venues, and he doesn't even know that he's getting ready to sing right now. He <laughs> <laughs> sure is. He sure is. I say he sure is. We'll get to that. Come on, brother, and stand up here and sing to the glory of God. Let's clap our hands for AJ. Come on, man. Lord said, 
Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm truly being obedient this morning to the word of God. As you hear, I'm in the very white uh, the register of my voice this morning. But that's your okay. fear. Some good days, and I had some hills to climb. I had some weary days, and some. But as I look around, and I think things over, all of my good days, I'll wait my bad days, sure I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can hardly see through. I ask the question, Lord, why? Here you go. He'll, he'll use you. 
if you won't sit on your testimony, hey brothers. We won't sing together if you know what you can sing with the choir. The song says, I'm grateful for the things you've done.
Church, say amen. Turn your Bibles, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. As we have in a special program today, we're going to do things a little differently. Uh, but I want to thank you for your presence. Those of you that got here after the official welcome, glad to see you today in the Lord's house. Last week, I fussed about folks being tardy, and I don't want to do that and be mean. Uh, so I just want to say I'm glad that you made it. Amen. Amen. And um, yes, thank you. First Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 12 is going to serve as our teaching text. And my sister has stood because in her tradition, obviously, the reading of the word is important. And I thank you, sister. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. I'm reading today from the Pew Bible, which is the New Revised Standard. It might sound different than what we grew up with, the King James. Now concerning spiritual gifts, would you say the word spiritual gifts? Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, do, I do not want you to be uninformed. When I was growing up, they said, I don't want you to be, what's the I word? Ignorant. Uh -huh. I don't want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand. Say, I want you to understand. That no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts but the same Spirit. I'm going to drop down to verse 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greek, slave or free, and we were all made to drink of, what's your Bible say? Indeed, the body does not consider one of its members, but many, if the foot would say, because I'm not the hand, I don't belong to the body, that would not make any less a part of the body. Excuse me, let me say it again. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not the eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. That's enough. Let the people say amen. amen. I want to share my little message today and simply call it all together now. Come on, throw your head back and say it like you mean it all, all together, together now. now. Come on, say it again. All, all together, together now. now. It's Black History Month. And in respect of the tradition of black history and the wonderful accomplishments of people that look like you and look like me, I thought I would draw to our attention for the introduction of the transition this morning of the sermon, a historical feat called the Montgomery Bus Boycott. If you know something about it, can you say amen? amen. You might recall, brothers and sisters, that if you learn in the school district and you just got a cursory understanding of that rich history, you would recall that there are two names that generally come up. If we would put them up on the screen, we would put Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on the screen and Sister Rosa Parks. But I need you to know, brothers and sisters, like so many in things in life, there's more to the story than what we're oftentimes told. So I want to draw to your attention a couple of names. The first one is Mary Fair Burks. Say it with me. Mary Fair Burks. Second one is Joanne Robinson. The third one is Thelma Glass. 
And the fourth one is Claudette Colvin. These four names might not be as familiar as the esteemed Dr. King and the esteemed Rosa Parks, but the rich truth is that in Montgomery, there was a college called Alabama State. There was a professor there by the name of Mary Fair Burke. She was a head of the English department and she loved her people and she knew that things were not right. Mary Fair Burks was a part of the teaching uh, establishment there at Alabama State. And along came a woman by the name of Joanne Robinson. Say Joanne Robinson. Mary Fair Burks was the leader and Joanne Robinson was the follower. There was a thing that they gathered together behind was called the Women's Political Council. They were concerned about justice issues there in Alabama. Mary was the lead and Joanne was her assistant. And what happened was is that Joanne Robinson had, was on her way home for Christmas and she got roughed up on the bus. She said, this is not right. And she changed her focus to ensure that the injustices regarding the bus system would be addressed. Once again, we know Dr. King and we know Rosa Parks, but Joanne Robinson had experienced this injustice. So she had the Women's Political Council talking about this particular matter. Fast forward several months later, there was a young girl by the name of Claudette Colvin. She was 15 years old. She was not married and she was expecting a child. She was arrested and roughed up on the bus just like Rosa Parks and just like Joanne Robinson. But the people of the day said, we can't use a 15 year old unmarried pregnant girl to be the face of the franchise. So they got an established, decent woman from the church by the name of Rosa Parks. Say Rosa Parks. And you all know the story. You know what happened. Rosa Parks said she was tired, but it was all a plan. She was arrested treated badly. Four days later, say four days later, Joanne Robinson went to Alabama State College, drafted up a notice to be sent out to the whole of the community. And she got together with Thelma Glass and Mayor Fair Burks, and they got the students to pass out these flyers all over the community. Four days later, and that was the start of the Montgomery bus boycott. Amen. Many folks don't know the richness of this history. If it were not for Mary Fair Burks and Joanne Robinson and Thelma Glass, if it were not for a 15-year-old girl that was pregnant by the name of Claudette Colvin, we might not have had that rich part of our history. Why do I stand before you to tell this story and paint a picture? And the reason why is, brothers and sisters, most of the time when we look at something awesome, we see those who stand out readily. But the truth of the matter is, is that if something awesome is going to happen, we all going to have to get together. Let the church say amen. amen. Many times there are people whose names are not called. Many times there are people whose actions are not heralded. But that thing wouldn't have gone down the way it went down were it not for folks who would distance themselves from their egos and say, we all together are going to do something grand. Could it be that God put us in the Church of Christian Fellowship today, brothers and sisters, to consider what we can do if we come together? Say, come together. Yes. Say it with me all together now. What can we do if we decide to lay aside our petty differences, to lay aside I'm in the in group and she's in the out group, and come all together? Say, all together to do something great for God. Amen. I'm so glad that when God decides to give you a divine download, he's well able to do it. And as I was thinking about our gathering here, 
with those from our office study club and those from the Divine Nine and those from the community of faith. And I realized we would all be together, perhaps with different priorities, but all knowing that God is great and greatly to be praised. Maybe, just maybe, somebody knows what it's like to hear from God. And that's just what happened to me. In my time of prayer and study, God brought my attention back to this first Corinthians passage of Scripture. Some of you know that the Apostle Paul, as led by the Spirit of God, is writing to the church at Corinth. And can I say it like a feeling? Corinthians were some rough actors. Amen. You read the Bible slowly, you'll find out that they were tripping. They were having trouble getting along. They were saying, I'm this and you're not that. They were having trouble. Sound like some of the stuff that's going on today. And what I find interesting is God brought me to this 1 Corinthians 12 passage to show me the importance of not uniformity, but unity. Say the word unity. Come on, say it again. All together now. Indeed, this passage of scripture is beautiful. The Apostle Paul starts off telling them, I don't want you to be ignorant, uninformed concerning the spiritual gifts. He goes on to talk about the necessity of having the Spirit of God at work in you. He goes on to talk about the importance of seeing the body of Christ as a physical human body. You heard him say, we're not going to disparage the ear or the eye or the foot or the hand. Because it's obvious what the Apostle Paul is trying to say is all of the parts need to be working for the body to do what it's supposed to do. Let the church say amen. amen. Can you see why I'm walking down the street today? Can you see why I'm excited to share? Somebody realizes today that if we ever need the Lord before, we sure do need him now. And if we ever needed to come together as a people, we sure need to do it now. Let the church say amen. amen. If we're going to be the kingdom of God, if we're going to be the body of Christ, yeah, if we're going to be those that are sold out for the Lord, we've got to put aside our differences. And stop all this foolishness. Stop all this set tripping. Stop all this, my skin is lighter than yours and my hair is curlier than yours and my lips and nose and hips are thicker than yours. I wish I had somebody could say amen. amen. We all God's children. And we got to come together now. Say it with me, all together now. Amen. Say it again, all together now. Amen. Notice if you please, if you read this and I want you to read it when you get home. But I want to share something that's corrective in nature. And then I want to share something that's constructive in nature. Hopefully all of it's constructive. But, but I want you to consider that the Apostle Paul seems to be encouraging the people to unity and not vanity. Say it with me. Unity, unity. not vanity. You know what was happening if you read it carefully. They were excited about having certain spiritual gifts. Nanny, 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 nah, I've got it and you don't. It's vanity. They were saying we're special because we've got this particular spiritual gift. And the Apostle Paul offers a word of correction. And I've come to come alongside the Apostle and say, amen. Yes, we've got to have unity and not Vanity. Say it with me. Unity, Unity. not vanity. Have you ever met somebody who just has a humility about them? They're gifted and wonderful and fabulous and fine. But they would say like the songwriter, if I should gain any praise, let it go back to, to God be the what? Not unity, but and not, not, not vanity, but unity. Here's the second one. Unity and not envy. Say it with me. Unity, unity. not envy. 
Again, read it when you get home. You'll see the Apostle Paul is saying, wouldn't it be ridiculous for the hand to say to the foot, you not me and I'm not you. And sometimes, sisters and brothers, if we're going to do something awesome from God, we've got to lay aside envy. Say it with me, lay aside envy. I don't mean to bother you and treat you like a third grader today, but I want you to get that thing deep in you. We've got to lay aside envy. Listen, if somebody is in your group that is obviously blessed, if there's some sister that obviously has leadership abilities, if there's some brother who obviously has organizational skills, get behind, push that sister up, push that brother up. Don't tear them down. Don't envy. Let's have unity and not envy. Church, say amen. Unity, not vanity. Unity, not envy. Here's the third one. Unity and not apathy. Say unity, unity. not apathy. We got enough folk sitting on the sidelines of apathy and inactivity. I'm almost done. We got enough folks that are saying it ain't going to make a difference. And if you don't hear anything else today, when the voting time comes, make sure you're not in the apathetic group. Amen. Make sure that you are distance yourself for some of your personal pleasures and ensuring that you're not apathetic, saying, I don't give a care. I don't give a rip. It's not going to make a difference. And if you hear somebody talking that foolishness, pull them aside and tell them some of the history. Let them know what it's going to take to change this sin sick world. Not apathy, but unity. Let the church say amen. amen. Let me carry on a little further. I don't want to be too aggressive today, but unity and not injury. Say it with me. Unity, amen. not injury. It's similar to some of the other ones I've said. But have you ever been in a group and the group is trying to do something good and somebody hurts your feelings? Just wink at me. You don't have to raise your hand. Because what I found even in good people, in good organizations, sometimes we hurt one another. We step on one another's proverbial toes. We hear a piece of gossip and we run folks down. But I'm here to say it's time out for injury. And it's time whew, all together now for unity. Let the church say amen. I love the Apostle Paul in these several verses here in 1 Corinthians 12 gives us some corrections to make sure that they don't get off track. And I'm so glad that right now we consider these words vanity, envy, apathy, injury, and make sure that we don't do that to one another. Huh? Come on, just uh, look at somebody and say, I need you and you need me. And we are all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. Now let's throw our heads back and say it again all together now. Amen. Well, preacher, that's all great. It looks like you're awful excited today, man. Yelling at us and jumping around. You've given us something corrective, but can you give me a recipe? Is there something constructive? How are we going to go about doing this? If you read these beautiful verses here in 1 Corinthians 12, it seems to me that there are three P words that if we're going to do something great together, say the word together. That if we'd focus on these three, I think we'll be all right. The first one, I think, is clear from the text. You can draw it out from several of the verses. But let's make sure that our purpose is clear. Say the word purpose. purpose. Say it again, please. Got to make sure the mission is straight. All of us are part of organizations that some of them have mission statements in the body of Christ. We ought to know what we're supposed to be doing. But every now and then, sometimes the methodology gets on top of the mission. Uh, 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 we, we, we get to worrying about all this other stuff, but we have to have our purpose clear. Say the word purpose. purpose. Put first things first. Yeah. One of the things I like about having friends that are recovering addicts 
is that whether they're a part of Alcohol Anonymous, Cocaine Analysis, uh, excuse me, Anonymous, all those Anonymous, Meth and uh, Sex Anonymous, they have clearly defined what their purpose is. Amen. And when they go to the meetings, it ain't about who's a big shot and who's a little shot. Everybody is clear and we're trying to get folks lives saved. The purpose is clear. So as you're sitting here today and you got a preacher yelling and yelling at you and yelling for you, ask yourself, in my organization, are we holding fast to the purpose? And I need you to know that it's great to have affiliation, and I'm glad I have some affiliation. But the best thing you've got going for you is that you're a child of God. Is there anybody here today that knows whether it's Monday or Sunday, your purpose is to honor God with your life? If I can help somebody, then my living shall not be in vain. Clear purpose. Not only do I see clear purpose in the text, but I see clear power. Say the word power. Power. What you're going to find is is that if you endeavor to do something significant like the things that we celebrate during Black History Month, if you're not moving in the power of God, you'll give up. Amen. But when you have got your purpose clear from God, eh? And you know that the power of God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Then you can hang in there when the storms of life are raging, when the adverse winds are blowing against you, when you can't do anything else but to stand. You'll know the power of God is able to keep you from falling. Let the church say amen. I see some of you moving your heads because you know what I'm talking about. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. God's power is unparalleled. Let the church say amen. Amen. We talked about that which is corrective, and I'm trying to give you something that's constructive. Make sure that the purpose is clear. Make sure that the power is clear. But also make sure that the the praise is clear. Can you say amen? amen? I know it's not deep and profound, but this is what the Lord gave me to share with you today. Huh? Make sure that the praise is clear. When I look back over my life and think, Brother Reggie, things over, hey, I can truly say that I am blessed. That's why we had testimony today. We have a testimony. And it's not because you're good looking. And it's not because you're well educated. Ain't nothing wrong with good looks or great education. But nobody can do you like Jesus. Hey. Amen. And so make sure when you're doing something great all together now. That the purpose is clear. And the power is clear and that the praise that you give to God, that God shown up deserves, is clear and obvious. Let the church say amen. Amen. I used to hear him sing in church. Said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I just couldn't hold my peace. Every now and then you'll be in church and the preacher will be preaching, the choir will be singing, the saints will be praying, and something gets to stirring. This morning I was getting ready for church and my neighbors probably was getting ready to call the police. Because I got to singing this song and that thing got a hold of me. And I was in the shower, you know, the acoustic in the shower make you feel like you in the tabernacle somewhere. Whoop. And I done yelled myself happy. It wasn't nobody but me and the Holy Ghost. And I had something to praise God for. I heard him say, picked me up and turned me around. 
place my feet on solid ground. He healed my body, told me to run on. He's my friend. Is there anybody here today that can just lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. All together now, thank you, Lord. All together now, thank you, Lord. He's my friend. He's been good to me. And he's been good to all of us. Let's have clear purpose. Let's have clarity concerning God's power. And don't be no amnesia Christian. I mentioned Alabama State. I thank God for all of you who graduated and took your course of study. Some of you got more degrees than the thermometer. <laughs> and I'm proud of you. And some of you, my old pastor used to say, graduated magna cum laude. And my old pastor used to say, some of you graduated summa cum laude. He said, but that ain't my testimony. I graduated. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I done looked over some folks' shoulders for my degree, Lord have mercy. Y'all don't talk about me. I did, though. But I got my BA in economics, and I'm proud of it. But if it had not been for the Lord <laughs> on my side, tell me, where would I be? my enemies away. Turn the sunshine on the cloudy day. Rocked me in the cradle of his arms because he knew I was battered and scarred. If it had not been eh, for the Lord on our side. All together now where would we be? Come on let's clap our hands for Jesus. Amen. Let's bow our heads, please. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those words this morning. God, we are in this all together. There's no secret agent Christians. There's no undercover Christians. Father, we thank you. That Lord God, we lift each other up. We thank you, Lord, that we don't show any envy toward one another, that we celebrate each other's success. <laughs> Father God, we pray, Father, that our words would not harm one another, that we would encourage each other. Because, God, we've been put down long enough. It's time for us to come around. But, God, as we come together, Father, it's all about unity. It's unity. Trusting in God. Trusting in each other. Father, as we come today, Father, and we celebrate you, Father, we celebrate that you have given us a clear purpose in life. Yes, God, you have told us who you are and who we should be. We understand that. Sometimes, Lord God, we fall to the wayside, but God, you somehow bring us back in line. But God, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God that lives within each and every one of us. Your power gets us through it all. And then, Lord God, as we look around and tears well up in our heart. We have to raise our arms and praise you. To thank you. Love. I worship and adore you. Die the clothes of me. 
Thank you, Lord. Lord God, we want to give someone an opportunity to give their lives to you. We don't want to celebrate and not give someone that time to say, it's time for me. It's time for you to give your life to him. And if that's you and you want to dedicate your life to Christ this morning, all you have to do is just raise your hand and God will see that hand of yours. And he knows it's you, it's you in the need of prayer today. Who would that be today? Lord, as I come to you, Lord God, and I plead to you, Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you renew the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. It renew us all, Father. We want to be renewed in you. Accept us the way we are. We love you, Lord. And we thank you. And maybe there's someone here today that said, I want to make this my church home. You hear the word of God. You feel the spirit in this place. And you say, now I'm home. I, this is it. This is where I want to be. If, if that's you, we want to make this your church home. Just raise your hand. And we'll welcome you into this family. Father, as these words go out and the spirit of the Lord is just oozes in this place, we ask in Jesus' name to continue to protect each and every one of us. As we pull together as one, one united in you, who trusts you, who have a purpose in our lives who know where that power is really coming from and who have the praise in our heart to give it all to you. We thank you for it now and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap this morning.
At this time, we would like to uh, take a moment to give a small portion of that that God has given to you back to him. He's blessed us in so many ways. And if it wasn't for God in our lives and the blessings he's given us, we don't know where we would be. I always say I like to give my best gift to him because he gave his best gift to us. He gave us his son who died on the cross for each and every one of our sins. So the least we can do is give our best gift to him. I want you to just close your eyes and think about the gift that God has given to you and what can you do to show him, not to the pastor, not to me, but to God, how thankful you are. Father, we thank you. We thank you for those that are giving here today. Father, those that are giving from the abundance of their heart, they're giving you their best gift because they want to say thank you for protecting them and watching over them and blessing them. This is the best we can do unto you, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Ushers, would you please come now and serve the people of God. Yesterday we had an event for Jack and Jill. I was in Jack and Jill as a boy. They needed to have a facility. So they called and they said, can we come on over there and do our thing for the kids? Guess what, when they got here, what they were expecting? The lights would be on. The bathrooms would be clean. They'd be taller paper in there. Amen. Amen. 
Huh? When we got ready to use the stove, that joker would work. I mean, yeah, when your stove breaks at home, you got to pay. They don't come over here and say we love Jesus and duck up for free at the church. Amen. Can you help your church? I said, can you help the church? When you die, you're going to want to come to the church too. You want it to be nice. You have to have some money. I don't know how to say it any clearer than that. Please give. If you didn't have a check or something like that, please. Thank you. Let's all stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you so very much. At this time, we're going to prepare ourselves for our program. And uh, I'm super glad that we have strong leadership as it relates to this program today. This time, let's clap our hands for Dr. Lura Daniels Ball. Give her a great hand, won't you? Thank you, Rev. Well, good morning, everyone. I don't know about you, but I'm sure glad to be in church this morning. And uh, really glad to be able to celebrate Black History Month in church, where it all begins. Um, before we start, if I could just have my, our, 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 I'm here today, of course, representing our church, but also as the president of Arthur Study Club, who along with William West are hosting um, everyone after church. And so if I could get Arthur Study Club members to please stand. Thank you very much. And I'm going to call on Brenda to come forward because she's going to help me. Come on, Brenda. <laughs> so um, I just want to set the occasion. Arthur Study Club has been around since 1945. We were founded by, by Vassy Wright, uh, D. Wright. And uh, we were chartered by the father of black history. Uh, you guys can sit down now. We were fathered by Carter G. Woodson, the father of black history. And uh, um, we have been holding black history um, celebrations since 1947. But since 1950, we have held citywide celebrations with every mayor since 1950. So we turned 79 on the 14th. And so we've been celebrating in the city for 74 years consecutively. And we're very proud of that. So our national, I don't know if you know about it, but our national theme every year for black history for the nation comes out of ASALA, which is the Association for the Study of Life and History of African Americans. And so our theme this year is African Americans and the arts. And the, of course, we all know that uh, our African arts experience, you know, we talk about the things that we know, dance, theater, film, music, but a lot of people don't think about folklore as an art, or language as an art, or even culinary experiences as an art, or architecture as an art. But those are all key pieces of art. And they, are, they represent African-American 
Caribbean lived experiences that have preserved our, our history, it's um, preserved our community memory, and it's served as empowerment. And we all know it's set trends around the world. So that is basically the theme. Now, my co-partner in crime, Jean, <laughs> Jean, stand up. She wanted to make certain that I gave you a few tidbits about the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance, of course, was the rebirth of, of African American arts. It was the intellectual, cultural revival of African American music, dance, art, fashion, literature, theater, politics, music, dance, art, uh, 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 and scholarship, I'm sorry, centered in Harlem, uh, Manhattan, New York City. At the time, it was known as a New Negro mo Movement, um, after Adam Locke's 1925 anthology of The Crossroads. Um, and it, re it was the crossroads of a new renewal of militancy, and it actually served as a foundation for the civil rights movement that was to come. So um, Harlem was the final destination for the, and the largest uh, uh, set of migration from the deep racist South. So the majority of people that left the deep South ended up in Harlem, if you can imagine. Um, and of course, we know some people like Langston Hughes, County Cullen, U.B. Blake, Ethel Waters, so many people we can't even talk about that came out of the Harlem Renaissance. And their artistic excellence is still reverberating today. People are still reimagining their work today. Now, fashion at that time, the ladies went from prim and proper to uh, short skirts and silk stockings. They dropped their dress lines. Uh, they wore loosely fit clothes. Um, and they had pearls and feather boas, and the men decided to start sporting those uh, wide brim hats. And uh, we knew we had dancers like Josephine Baker. We had uh, um, our, we, we saw our first millionaire, Madam C.J. Walker, and her daughter Dorothy Waring, who was an artist and author of 12 novels. So those are just a few of the tidbits from the Harlem Renaissance. Now, for what you're, you can sit down. I'll get you. No, I'll get you later. So now, let's get into our program. It is important that our children are involved in everything that we do, and I am so happy that two of our children, actually three of our children, will be participating this morning. So I'm going to. I don't know, Christian and Kimberly. Do you want to come up together? Okay. So we are going to receive Christian and Kimberly Burwell. And they are going to read, they are going to read, I'm gonna let them announce what they're going to read. Um, Ashley, can you help them with the microphone? Come on up. Ashley's gonna get you, I think we want you right here so yeah, they can see this. you. We'll do this.
to China Pearl, and I'm seven years old. Oh, The Negro Speaks of the Rivers by Langston Hughes. I know the rivers. I had known the rivers of ancient, the world of older dimly, flow of human blood and veins. My soul had grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when when dunes are young, when I go near cut near the condo, it's lonely to, to sleep, and I looked upon the Nile to raise the pyramids above it. When I heard singing in Mississippi, when they looking went down like to New Orleans, it seems really at the blessings turn all golden and set. I know the rivers, ancient, lusty rivers. My soul had grown deep like the rivers. Cool, Isn't it wonderful to give our children an opportunity in church? Amen. Thank you so much. I believe the best thing we can give our young people is our support and our participation. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I got all of my public speaking um, in church. You know, <laughs> whether it was scriptures or in my mother's case, I always had to do concerts uh, <laughs> for, for fundraisers. But now we are pre we are going to have a musical selection from Mr. Shane Eddings. Set master, prop master, A, B, and everything. I'm, I'm the stage manager for today's uh, proceedings, so I have a, a, a little set piece I want to put up here for us. Get us in the mood for what Brother Shane is coming up to offer and deliver. Look out, man. Come on now. I <laughs> read. Get up, stand up. 
Stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. Most people think we're God will come from the sky. Take away everything and make everybody feel high. But you don't know what life is worth. You will look for yours on earth. So now you see the light. What you gonna do? You gonna stand up for your rights. Jump, get up, stand up. Jump, jump, stand up for your rights. Oh, get up, stand up, get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. Cause you're right. Get up, stand up. You're the fight. Get up for your rights. Lord, Lord, get up, stand up. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. We're getting sick and tired of your isms, schism, game, dying, go to heaven in the Jesus name, Lord. We know and we understand, Almighty God was a living man. You can fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all the time. So now you see the light, what you do, you stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up, stand up for Get up, stand up, don't give up the fight. Get up, stand up, stand up, stand up for your life. Get up, stand up, get up, stand up, don't give up the fight. Stand up, get up, stand up, stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up, don't give up the fight. Hello, my name is Shane, and I go to Lake Center Middle School, and I am eight. I'm twelve. <laughs> okay, so if you've noticed, we've had praise and worship, we've had Negro spirituals. We've had contemporary Christian, and we've had Afro-Caribbean, or reggae, rather. And now, Ashley is going to bring us an example of what excellence is in classical. Thank you, Laura. This is a piece that was arranged. It's an arrangement, but it's, I call it a sacred arrangement. It's a sacred piece. Uh, the Negro spiritual, he's got the whole world in his hands. But it's the setting, it's the arrangement and setting by the great late Margaret Bonds, whose music is now celebrated and really coming into its own. The catalog, her, Florence Price, a few other African-American composers whose works we have always held near and dear. But in the canon, canonically speaking, we celebrate Mozart and we celebrate Strauss. These are the songs, these are our experiences that we also can celebrate. celebrate excuse me. This track is provided by my dear friend and our friend here at the Church of Christian Fellowship, Douglas Sumi. Uh, please enjoy. He's got 
the hole in his hand. He's got the woods and the waters in his hand. He's got the woods and the waters in his hand. He's got the sun and the moon right in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the birds and the bees right in his hand. He's got the birds and the bees right in his hand. He's got the beasts of the field right in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me right in his hand. He's got you and me right in his hand. He's got goodness, my goodness. Ashley is in the company of the LA Opera. We get a chance to uh, see him quite often. And uh, boy, what a voice. Uh, Oh, well, thank you so much, Ashley. Now we're going to, you know, the way we live is art. The way we walk is art. (laughs) The way we dress is art. The way we talk is art. The way we code switch is art. (laughs) And um, right now, I want to bring up a young man who I called last week and he didn't, he didn't waver at all. He just said, okay, I'm gonna get it done. But I want to recognize the black Greek experience. Um, just prior to that though, I want to just say that um, if you've noticed the uh, stained glass windows around the church, some of them have some of our black colleges in it. And we're gonna talk about those a little bit later, but. We, the UCC comes from the American Missionary um, or, or Organization, which was the original Amistad Committee, and they founded nine black colleges around the country. And when we moved to this building, um, I guess they took, up a found, they took up a collection and decided to put in um, some of the black colleges that represent some of the schools that were um, founded by the AMA, which is now UCC. And so we do have Fisk and Houston Tillotson. Um, We have Lemoyne Owens, Tougaloo, and I think Talladega might be up there too. Um, But um, they found Brea, Dillard, uh, Gregory Normal, Hampton, Howard they did with the Freedmen's Bureau, um, and uh, Avery Normal, which is now part of the chapel system. But um, it's important that you see the different ways that we preserved our history through art. And uh, I just love these stained glass windows. So I am, without further ado, I'm gonna bring up Mr. Sidney Jackson Jr. so he can recognize the members of the Divine Nine that we've invited here today. And uh, and I think you're gonna talk a little bit about them and then bring up whoever's here. Uh, our study club has a little something, something for them. Thank you, man. Good morning, church family. Good morning. It always feels good to be in the house of the Lord. And especially I grew up in this church. I was seven years old when my grandmother, Sydney Grisette, brought me to this church. And when I see the young children up here doing the the black history, that I did the same thing when I was seven, eight, nine, ten years old and served here at the church for a long, long time. And as I saw the pastors 
you know, change over the years. Each one of them had a great impact in my life, um, uh, especially Pastor McKnight. Um, I love him dearly. He, he married me and my lovely wife, Dina, in the back. And Ashley sang at my wedding. So I love you all. So today, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Divine Nine and what the Divine Nine stands for. The National Panhellenic Council is a conglomerate of all the African American fraternities and sororities. And we had a significant role in black history because although each one of our organizations has founding principles, a couple of things that is very common with all the organizations, and that is we want to educate our people and we want to mentor the youth because those two things have been so critical throughout the history of this country. Education of our youth and making sure our communities are taken care of and that we police our own. Amen. So obviously, whether you have been to college or not, role models are very, very important. And one thing about the National Panhellenic Council, the Divine Nine, is that we are role models for our youth and that we consistently make sure that in our organizations that we keep that on the top of mind when we have our meetings involving how are we going to help our community? How are we going to get the right to, the right to vote, get more people out to vote? How are we going to support each other as we go through this difficult thing called life? And one thing that is most important to all of us that we do is keep our faith high, that we keep God first. Amen. So right now, what I want to do, if you are a member of a Divine Nine organization, can you please stand? Any member of a Divine Nine? Now, I love to see my brothers and sisters in all of their colors, and I have relationships after being in the organization 35 years. I pledged at uh, UCLA in the spring of 1989, New Delta chapter, and I'm the current regional director of my organization. So that being said, uh, the NPAC, which I love so very dearly, I emailed them out and said, can you guys come to my church? and support because we have a black history program. So we have a member of IOTA Phi Theta for turning to court, but Ben Ize, he's the current president of the NPAC. Brother Ben. Ben, come up here, please. And then we have the former president, uh, Soror Trina Nice, a member of Delta Sigma Theta. Trina, come up here, please. And then we have the uh, president-elect that's coming up after Ben, uh, my fraternity brother, Brother Larry Dillon. And we have one of my fratters, you saw him earlier, a good friend of mine, lovely brother, Brother Adam Jackson. Can you come up here too, please? And then uh, my own fraternity brother, he is the director of collegiate affairs, so his job is to make sure the colleges have a excellent relationship with our organizations so that that consistency and communication has to be consistently uh, developed to make sure we're always on campus. Brother Dr. Michael Basie, can you come up here please? So these are consistent leaders of the organizations in Los Angeles. The NPAC was founded on May, uh, on, in 1930, is when all the organizations kind of came together and said, you know, we're, we all have our principles and, and our ideas of what we're gonna do individually as organizations, but we do have to come together as one unit, and that's what the National Panhellenic Council is. And every major city in the country 
has a council of all of us coming together to meet, to figure out community service projects that we are going to do together as a unit. Because it shows the community, I don't know if you guys, you guys obviously see the King Parade every year, and you'll see various uh, parts of our organization in the King Parade every other year, every year. And so what we like to do is definitely appreciate and thank you guys for having the Divine Nine a part of the Black History Program, and we love you very much. God bless. Our the study club. Oh, can my members come forward so you guys be in the picture? Members, quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Um, Art the Study Club is uh, providing the leaders uh, with our Kente Stoles that has the Art the Study Club and the Asala. Uh, these are hand woven from Ghana. And we just want you guys to know, recognize, that we recognize your commitment as well to black history. Now, did we get all of the sororities and fraternities? Did we mention them all? Okay. No? The Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, and Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated. Beautiful. The impact of these organizations within our community is immeasurable, and we are so grateful for them. Last but not least, we want to recognize our um, um, alumni from our historically black colleges. Before the pandemic, each year we had um, uh, people that were, um, each, each we would have different uh, colleges come, but um, that hadn't happened since the pandemic. So if you are here with the Historically Black College, can you please stand? Yeah. Is there anyone here that is a leader in their alumni chapter? Okay, can you just call out what, what uh, schools you're with? What, what school did, what college did you go to? Grambling State University. Grambling State University. Talladega. Talladega. Central State University. Central State. Fisk. Fisk University. Fisk University. Fisk University. Prairie I didn't hear that one. Prairie oh, Prairie View. State University. State University. Morehouse College. Morehouse College. Alabama State. Alabama State. Tuskegee. Dillard, Dillard. Dillard. Okay, Dillard University. Howard University. Howard University. Are there any others? And Howard University. Thank you. And I'm just going to bring up Dr. Jett because he looks so good at his information. Come up, come up real quick, Dr. Jett, so we can end the program. Because I see Pastor getting antsy back there. <laughs> This is what PhD looks like. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Tell us where you went to school. Um, so yes, this is a, a faculty regalia. Um, a lot oh, of, yeah, so a lot of faculty, um, uh, different universities have different uh, places where um, they have their own custom regalia. Yeah. And so this is, this is the regalia for Stanford University. And so that's where I received my PhD. And so um, as a faculty member, wherever I was a faculty member uh, for commencement, I would wear you know, the Stanford regalia, mostly known for the red, being open-faced. And uh, for whatever you get your PhD, uh, depending on their discipline, that determines the color of the, the, the trim and the hood. Uh, and mine is orange. Well, which means engineering. So I received my PhD in Stanford in engineering. Come on, let's get Dr. Jeff. He's a bad man. Okay, take a picture of Pastor. Let's get a little closer. Maybe we'll come over this side real quick. 
You almost done there? You good? No, I'm going to let you guys. Hmm? Sorry. So that ends our portion of the program. I want to thank Jean uh, Wilson, who is, our, like I said, our partner in crime. We're always trying to put together programs that make our pastor and our congregation proud. I really hope that you all have enjoyed um, the program this morning, but you are, are in for some delicious treats afterwards. Um, and I want to turn this back over to the hands of our pastor. And I think the last thing left to do is to sing our song and have pastor's closing remarks and our closing prayer. And we'll bless, I think we'll bless the food in here. Come on, let's give Dr. Lurie. Daniel's ball a hand. What a blessing, and I want to thank you all. You know, we don't do this all the time. And there's a couple of things that um, when you are giving children an opportunity, you are preparing them. I thank God for Brother Jackson who reminded we talked about having your purpose straight, and Divine Nine Organization has got their purpose straight. Amen. Yeah. To always look out for manners in which we can mentor our young people. And so I'm thankful today. Um, I want to offer this to you that sometimes you got to eat the fish and spit out the bones. And as a pastor of a church, I need you to know that the lyrical content of songs I listen to. So you might have heard something today that didn't match with your theology, it didn't match with mine. But we still gonna give children an opportunity, amen, amen. to express themselves with proper leadership, proper leadership. So I heard it and you did too. We're going to carry on in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's tight, but it's right. Now, um, what we're going to do now is to thank God for all of our participants. Let's clap our hands for Christian and Kimberly. Let's clap our hands for Shane and Ashley. Let's clap our hands for Brother Sidney Jackson Jr. and Dr. Laura Daniels Ball. Come on, let's give them what they deserve. And when we get in the back, you're going to have such a, a wonderful time. We're going to get ready to sing our closing song. But before we do that, I want to ask a, a fine gentleman to stand, Mr. R Mr. Bill West. Would you stand, Bill, please? Uh, Bill is a member of our church. And he wanted to make sure that we had a super duper time in our fellowship today. So he uh, made a significant underwriting of the uh, the luncheon that we're gonna have, and we're gonna have a peanut butter and jelly. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we're gonna have a throw-down meal back there, and you're gonna feel like you're at a five-star restaurant. I want to thank uh, Sister Steph Johnson, who's responsible for the catering, and I want you all to stay, and I want you to go back there and visit the our office study club table and get information. I want to thank God for some folk I haven't seen in a while, but I know love me and I love them. Amen. I'm glad to see you. Glad to see you. Absolutely. Uh, Brother Jackson stands today uh, dealing with um, the, the death of his brother, and uh, we'll be celebrating his life at the, at the end of the next week. And so I want you to remember the Jackson family, the three here in front, Brother Jackson, Sister Dina Jackson, Remember their family in prayer. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand and prepare to sing a beautiful Negro national anthem. It's part of our history. I know folks are tripping about this lately. But black history is American history. Amen? Come on, it's on the back of your paper. If you don't have it, if you don't know it, it's okay. Let's sing together. Come on.
morning we're going to have a word of prayer over the food and then we're going to ask that you exit through these doors right here. Go straight ahead and inside you're going to find something that has been prepared with love and um, let's have a fabulous time. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Brother Bill. I just love you, man. And when you go back there, since we're right at noon, you go and you take your seat and we'll have a great day. All right. When you see the young people that participated, smile at them and tell them you're proud of them. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray. God, thank you for the blessings today as we consider the theme all together now. So grateful for members of the Divine Nine. So grateful for the members of our Arthur Study Club. So grateful for those of the body of Christ. So grateful. May we come together considering our purpose, considering always your power, considering the importance of giving you praise that you so richly deserve. Bless the food and the loving hands that prepared it and those that moved this day from a plan to a beautiful reality. Amen. 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 Come on, let's make our way through these doors, through the double doors. Don't hurry off. You're going to have a good time if you stay.